Hi everybody and welcome to this year's uh, Capella annual meeting. Uh, my name is Juan Navas. I'm a lead expert on model-based systems engineering at Thales Corporate Engineering. And uh, I would like to thank you, thank everybody, thank all the, um, the members of the, um, of the Capella community that uh, contributed to this, um, to this webinar. Um, the goal of today's webinar is to, uh, to present a summary of what happened uh, around Capella. Uh, last year, I um, mean, last 12 months since the last uh, uh, Capella annual meeting last year, um, and uh, in in many dimensions, not only about the tool, of course, about the tool, but also about the um, the I mean the the, the ecosystem around uh, Capella. Uh, most of you uh, are current users or current uh, are are aware of um, of Capella and its features. Uh, but for those that are not aware uh, of them, I will provide a, I mean, extremely short uh, presentation of of Capella, Capella Tech Lance. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to say that Capella is the open source solution for designing systems architectures and target systems engineers and architects, and most importantly, has been designed by this kind of population. So it's. Uh, very well adapted to the uh, to the needs of systems engineers, and that it has been uh, proven again and again uh, since the um, the availability of Capella's open source uh, software. And this open source dimension is very important for the following um, part of the, this presentation. A second major aspect uh, of uh, Capella is that it provides uh, embedded methodological guidance for implementing model-based systems engineering in your organization. Uh, it embeds a systems engineering model-based systems engineering method which that is called Arcadia uh, and the tool is uh, well adapted to this method and the method can be tailored for you know, to different uh, context uh, industries and uh, different ways of approaches for uh, for systems engineering uh, and I will talk a little bit about that uh, later as well. Uh, it's, it's a very, very, very short uh, presentation of Capella, but if you want to know more about Capella, I highly recommend to uh, to, to go to the uh, Getting Started uh, playlist at the uh, Capella YouTube channel. Uh, there are a set of videos uh, that will incrementally uh, provide you the information. I mean, from a two minutes video with the highlights of uh, Capella, until a full tutorial of uh, building uh, and designing a system architecture uh, with uh, Capella following Arcadia method. The following of my presentation is structured in, in two parts. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about the, the ecosystem, the community uh, around uh, Capella. As, as I say, the Capella is open source software. It means that uh, it's not as controlled as others, uh, other software that you, you may know. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's grow, the growing of the ecosystem is, is kind of uh, not random, but uh, guided by the needs of the, um, of the users and the, and the willingness of the, uh, of the whole ecosystem, including software developers. So I will talk about this community aspect. And then I will talk about the features of the tool, uh, the features that were added this year, and uh, not only about the, the core of Capella, but also about um, added by the whole ecosystem that I uh, of software developers and uh, other tool uh, providers uh, that I talked before. Uh, to talk about the community, uh, I, I like very much this uh, this photo. It's a contemporary dance uh, photo. Uh, it kind of represents the uh, the Capella community uh, because we we all have different uh, rhythms, uh, different uh, uh, interests. Uh, and different ways to uh, to perform systems engineering and model-based systems engineering in our organizations, but we we can all dance at the same pace uh, and uh, use this uh, this tool Capella for uh, I mean for satisfying our, our our needs in our own context. Uh, so it's, uh, it's it's a cool part of the uh, of the Capella ecosystem that we are kind of different companies uh, using it, and we we all find. Uh, how to uh, how to manage the complexities that we face uh, the, the quotidian uh, the daily basis uh, with uh, with the tool and the method and the features that are provided by the others uh, tool vendors uh, that are associated with uh, with Capella. So let's start about the, uh, the major highlights uh, about the Capella community. And one of the major highlights last year was the were, were the Capella days. 
the Capella Days. It's a, it's a conference that is uh, run online uh, since uh, 2020, and it's, um, it's a huge success. Uh, it uh, more than 900 um, uh, attendees or registered attendees uh, from uh, more than 50 countries, uh, 15 speakers, uh, 11 talks. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was really a success. It was a very, very interesting material. It's everything is available in the YouTube channel. I will talk about the channel just, just afterwards. And I would like to uh, thank very much the uh, sponsors of this, uh, of this conference and the speakers and the organizers um, for your contribution to this, um, to this conference. Uh, well, second major highlight is the YouTube channel. Uh, we had an increase of 40%. Uh, on uh, number of uh, views, uh, no, sorry, number, number of subscribers uh, to the channel. Um, so uh, the, we, we were uh, short to the thousand subscribers and now we are almost, uh, I, I think we should be uh, more than uh, 1,400 uh, subscribers today because it was like a week ago that I got this, uh, this graphic. Um, but yeah, it's an impressive uh, in, improvement uh, in the number of subscribers. And for those that are not yet subscribed, well, I highly recommend to subscribe. And you will notified, you will be notified about the new videos that are added in, in the many playlists that we have created. Um, and uh, of course, you will have all the, the 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 videos that are already there and that are a very good, uh, very good resources for starting. Uh, with Capella and know uh, the features that have been improved in, in, added in the last years. Some of the playlists that I highly recommend, uh, of course, the webinars, uh, today 30, 34 videos. Uh, webinars are made by the, by other companies. I mean, Thales obviously uh, participate to these webinars, but other companies also share their experience uh, using Capella. Uh, getting started with Arcadia and Capella, I just talked about it. Uh, the Capella days, of course, 2020 and 2021. Uh, all the presentations have been recorded and are available in the channel. And the Python for Capella add-on tutorials are also available in the channel. I will talk about it just uh, afterwards. Of course, the webinars are there. Uh, so last year we uh, we run uh, eight webinars. Um, we had more than 5,000 views in YouTube, so it's, it's great. Uh, and I would like to uh, thank the, the organizer. Obeo is organizing these webinars and they're, they're great. Uh, and the speakers this year, Thales, Artal, Siemens, etc. All these um, these people that uh, contributed, sharing their experience uh, using Capella and Arcadia in their own industrial context. This is very rich material, highly recommended as well. The forum. Uh, well, we, we we changed the forum uh, last year or the year before. Uh, and since we have seen an incre in increasing uh, number of uh, of users and of post as well. Uh, so uh, 800 users today, uh, more than uh, around 350 pages in uh, per day last year. Uh, I got the, the statistic they told me is no robots guaranteed. So it's, I mean, real people, uh, you, me or whatever. <laughs> uh, well, 1,400 posts in 2021, 4,200 visits. So it's, it's great. It's uh, it's uh, taking, uh, I mean, it is increasing, and, and this is our good news as well. Uh, please go to the forum. Uh, if you have questions, uh, maybe your colleague uh, next, uh, um, next to you uh, can answer you. But if not, uh, don't hesitate to go to the forum and uh, let the community help you. Um, and, and check the forum as well if your, if your questions are already being answered. Uh, there is a, a good uh, search uh, engine uh, that uh, will allow you, I mean, hopefully to find the answers to your, to your questions. And most importantly, don't get blocked uh, and use the forum to, 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 get, uh, to find your answers. Python for Capella. Last year we released this uh, kind of a prototype add-on, uh, which is quite cool. Uh, it's an embedded editor uh, in Python language that will allow you to create scripts to extract and insert data from and to Capella. 
so the main idea is to to provide an API uh, that it will expose the model elements and provide some some I mean methods like sets, gets, and others uh, based it on an engineering oriented and non technical Arcadia meta model. It's a simplified uh, meta model with really I mean compared to the the, the meta model that is implemented in in Capella and is uh, simpler to to. Uh, to, I mean, to handle. Uh, and we also added a lot of sample scripts, uh, including some exporting, importing data to uh, from uh, Excel files. Uh, last year, there was a dedicated webinar for that. Uh, and there is a playlist uh, with uh, tutorials and step-by-step, uh, -step, uh, I will say, uh, getting started with uh, with the uh, Python 4 Capella add-on. The Python 4 Capella add-on is in the Capella Labs that were presented last year, which is in space, uh, free space to, to share your contributions uh, around Capella. And of course, if you do, uh, if you write some new scripts uh, using Python 4 Capella, don't hesitate to, uh, to I mean to upload them to the uh, to the Capella Labs as well. It can be uh, I mean useful for other members of the community as well. There were some advances in, in model-based systems engineering practices as well last year. Um, I mean there there are others that are not named here, and you can go to the resources page of the uh, official Eclipse Capella uh, website to to know more. Uh, I will just talk about two papers that were, um, I mean, two, two, yeah, two, two papers that were uh, uh, written by, uh, by Thales people, I mean, in my company. Uh, the first one is, uh, the, the left side is about uh, do, re, re, doing model-based product line engineering. Um, and it's a, it's a very interesting one, step-by-step -step, uh, uh, description on how to uh, run and use the Arcadia method and the Capella tool in a product line context uh, in order to uh, to really improve the reusability of uh, of the uh, designs that we um, that we do. Uh, and the second one is a series of um, of uh, articles that were uh, published in the uh, Project Performance uh, Institute of PPI. Uh, newsletter uh, written by me, but is based on a paper with uh, with other colleagues here, um, and talks about agility and uh, how to uh, to implement agility uh, when we are doing model based architectures uh, or architectures models and how architectures models are enablers for uh, for agility based on experiences uh, here in in our company. So I highly recommend to to take a look to this uh, to these uh, resources, uh, and there will be there is another advance that is not yet published. It's a new paper from uh, that will be presented in the next uh, um, Incozi International Symposium, and it will talk about the model based uh, and I mean from model based to model and simulation based systems architecture and how uh, to use a simulation to uh, to assess. Uh, the um, the design of of our architectures and how to add these uh, analytical and dynamic simulations dimensions uh, to uh, to our architecture design work. So highly recommended as well. We will let you know when is uh, when it would become available for uh, for all of you. Some uh, I would say official uh, data. Uh, even it's, it's quite difficult to have official data uh, from an open source tool, but uh, Obio, Obio has a, does a great job of following uh, following this. So uh, you see the I mean great increase in our organizations uh, using uh, Capella. Of course, it don't does doesn't only include uh, industrial organizations, but also academic organizations and uh, uh, sh um, small uh, enterprises. But uh, it's, a, it's a huge increase. It's, uh, it's kind of a almost 50% increase last, last year. We are today at, uh, around 630 uh, organizations using Capella. So it's great. Uh, it's great news. Um, and uh, yeah, I invite all the members of these organizations to, to use all the resources that were presented before the YouTube channel, uh, the playlist, the webinars, the forum, uh, Python for Capella, etc. And regarding these, uh, these um, organizations, uh, where we'll see an uh, overwhelming majority of uh, what is called aerospace and defense, uh, which is a uh, I mean, a traditional systems engineering, uh, uh, I mean, uh, an industry that, 
I'm kind of implements systems engineering a wider basis, but there are other domains that are increasing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't have the evolution uh, related to, to other uh, to other years, but we have a more heterogeneity of users, and that's good news because it, it means that we will have uh, uh, quite exciting returns of experience in other domains, in other industry industrial domains in uh, in a few months, I hope. And uh, yeah, that's that will be quite interesting uh, this year, I hope. So uh, the second part of uh, and the major part of the uh, of this presentation today uh, it's about the features of Capella and the evolutions that were made uh, last year and some of them and some of those that are foreseen uh, in this year. Uh, I choose this uh, this photo because in at some extent Capella could be talked at as, as a platform like the green Lego uh, piece that you see here uh, and and what I call the Capella core. Uh, well, it continues evolving and uh, improving uh, and providing uh, amazing features uh, that will be presented just afterwards. Uh, but there are also a lot of evolutions happening and new features being added uh, by other uh, members of the ecosystem. And uh, I decide to uh, to to provide a place to uh, some of the uh, the tool vendors uh, and software developers. Uh, that uh, develop extensions uh, to Capella or bridges with their own tools uh, in order to uh, uh, to provide this uh, this I mean high level landscape of, of the features and the position and the and the role of these uh, features in uh, in a systems engineering workflow and how this uh, this evolution from software uh, externals other third party uh, tool vendors uh, can enhance the the scope of uh, of capella in your own uh, context uh, for that i will use this uh, good old v cycle uh, uh, of course uh, we are well aware that uh, some of you don't work in a v cycle but rather on on agile or other kind of uh, life cycle uh, approaches uh, so it's i mean it's it's just uh, it's only for for a reference and only to um, to um, to define the major scope of, of Capella. In Capella, it's obviously focused on the architecture design. This is the major uh, major features of, of Capella, the core of Capella. A little bit of detailed design because we have seen uh, some uh, I mean detailed components that have been uh, designed with uh, using uh, Capella on some of the features of Capella. A little bit of concept of operations because we have already seen uh, and there are quite a lot of webinars. I'm talking about how Capella uh, has been used at, the, at this uh, early phases of the uh, of the engineering process when we are exploring and defining how the system will be uh, will be used, how we use it, and how we be operated. Uh, so yeah, and, and of course there there are some um, uh, features of Capella that are oriented towards uh, early verification and validation. There are the validation rules. There are all the extensibility of Capella that allow to uh, run analysis that will secure the design and obviously secure the uh, the integration, verification, and validation task. Um, it's not an uh, integration, verification, and validation uh, tool, uh, but uh, what we do in Capella kind of uh, provide the can provide the, the structure and the basis and the skeleton of the uh, of the future uh, integration test integration verification and validation test. Uh, for instance, the the sequence diagrams, the scenarios that we provide, the functional chains can be used to uh, to to structure the. Um, the um, the IVV uh, process. So that's why uh, I, I include a little bit of uh, verification and validation in the scope of Capella. And we will see how progressively this scope can be enhanced uh, by uh, the, the contribution of the, the other tool vendors uh, that uh, kind of add these other new features uh, to the core of Capella. But uh, first of all, we will see uh, how uh, where the the major evolutions of uh, the core of Capella and also some of the major I mean core add-ons uh, of uh, of Capella. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there is this um, purple uh, zone, and there is the one of the add-ons, uh, the extension of Capella that are provided on the open source as well, which is the requirements add-on. 
uh, and there were there has been some evolutions on that as well. And there is also all the technical management concerns that are uh, not uh, shown in this uh, V cycle, but all that are absolutely necessary for uh, implementing model-based systems engineering uh, in the real world. And one of the major uh, tools uh, on that and the major add-ons to Capella is, well, Team for Capella, which uh, allows multiple, I mean, many people to work on a Capella model uh, at the same time in a simultaneous way. And that coupled with, uh, for instance, a Git uh, management uh, version, a uh, version management system uh, can provide uh, some uh, configuration management features. And there have been some evolutions on Team for Capella uh, this year as well. So in order to present these evolutions, uh, I thank very much my colleague Mintu, uh, who is a member of the Capella development team here in, in Thales. And he he will uh, he will introduce this uh, this uh, major evolution the major evolutions that were um, that were done um, last year. Hello and welcome to the Capella Webinar 2022. My name is Min Tu. I'm a software developer from Capella team. Today I'll be presenting some of the core evolutions of the two versions of Capella that came out in 2021. Here are some statistics uh, from the deliver of Capilla in 2021. So, we delivered two versions in 2021, the 5.1 on June and recently the 5.2 in December. More than 171 stories have been realized, including bug fixes and enhancements. You can find on the slide some representative numbers in terms of changes in the Capilla code repository. And for information, a major version of Capilla will be released in mid-2022, the Capilla 6.0. So we are looking forward to uh, delivering this new version. So let's get started with the newest features that have been integrated in the Capilla product. The full list of contextual menus have been enabled on the semantic browser. In the previous version, some of the most important actions in Capilla are not available on the semantic browser view which makes it quite difficult to be used. Imagine that you want to immediately add some new diagrams or you want to perform a transition on an element on the semantic browser. Uh, you've got to show the element in the project explorer and then after then, you could apply your actions. In this version, a bunch of common used actions have been directly applicable on the semantic browser, which makes it really easier to be used. One of the views in Capilla that's really helpful but not known by a lot of Capilla users is the interpreter view. In a few words, this view allows you to launch some queries on the Capilla model and give you back the result after Capilla evaluates your queries. One of the reasons which makes this view difficult to use is the fact that you cannot do anything on the result that's returned by the view. In this new version, a lot of interesting contextual menus have been added in this view. It makes it really easier to do something with the results of your queries, like looking for it in the Project Explorer or even delete it completely. Speaking about the semantic browser, in this version we have added a lot of new queries which allow you to have some more information in the view. Most of these queries focus on the class diagram elements. Let's take an example of uh, new queries on the class model element. Now, when a class is selected in the semantic browser, addition to existing information, you're going to find as well all of the properties and operations that belong to that class. You can find the slide, the rest of these queries that have been added. The next enhancement is quite useful for those of you who work with complex functional chains or physical paths. Let me switch to a demo to show you this enhancement. Have you ever worked on functional chains and you end up with this kind of situation in which you have different functional chains that overlap each other? In Capella, each functional chain is represented by a color and when a functional chain overlaps with the other, the common functional change becomes black. So it's okay if you have one or two overlapped functional chains, but it becomes quite complicated if you have a lot of overlapped functional chains. First, on an overlapped functional exchange, it's quite hard to determine what are the related functional chains. You've got to trace back to where the overlapping begins to look for the related functional chains, right? Second, 
if you want to follow a chain from the beginning to the end, it's not simple either, since you don't know where the chain goes next. To resolve these issues, we've added some pie icons on the overlapping functional exchange that represents the color of the functional chains that pass by. Like this, on a given overlapping functional exchange, you know right away the related functional chains. And following a chain becomes a matter of following the color found in these icons. You can also show the label of related functional chains next to the icons, but if you find these labels are too cumbersome, then you can just hide them away. Another interesting enhancement is for users who work on diagrams with physical paths. So as you may notice, unlike the functional chains, in capillar physical paths, there's no notion of direction. A physical component involving in a path can be the beginning point, but also the ending point of the path. Let's take a look at the example on the slide. A physical path that's modulized like this can be interpreted in different ways. It could be the PC1 that initiates the path, which connects to the PC2, which in its turns dispatches to PC3 and PC4. It could also be the PC3 that initiates the path, which ends up at PC1 and PC4 via PC2. So to make the path structure complete, in case of this kind of multi-branch path, we make sure that all of the interpretations of the path are possible. For example, you can have a look at how the path passed by PC2 in this example. Of course, you can always use the show high tool to adapt it to your interpretation. Next, we have some new supports for the usage of version control in Capilla with Git. After some version control operations, your model can end up in a conflict state. Let's say, for example, you make some changes on your model on a dedicated branch, and then you merge it back to the main branch. In case of conflict, you are not supposed to continue to work on your model, because actually your model is no longer in a coherent state, and continuing to work on it just makes the problem worse. To avoid this kind of situation, now in Capilla, you cannot open a session if Capilla detects that your model is in a conflict state. And if you open your model, a pop-up is going to show up to ask you to close your session to avoid any further problem. This enhancement really makes working with Git a lot of easier than before. Four. Next, we have some improvements in the display of jump links in diagrams. Let me switch to a demo to show you this enhancement. Jump links, for those who don't know, have been around Capilla since version 5.1. They represent different ways to decide how intersections look like in Capilla diagram. You could choose to show jump links in form of semicircle, square, or tunnel, which is also the default style. So, what comes to this version is the ability to set an edge backwards or forwards with regards to the other edge at an intersection. You can do it via the contextual menu, format, order, then bring forward or backward, or via the associated shortcuts such as the control F for bring forward and control B for bring backward. You can also bring an edge forward or backward on all the intersections that it has by using the control shift F or control shift B. It's quite convenient. We also replace diagram images by SVG files to improve the quality of images exported from Capilla diagrams. As you can see on the slide, some diagrams in PNG format can be pixelated when zooming, while it's not the case for SVG images. We also work on state machine diagrams to add new validation rules to better manage state machines in which elements like states and modes are mixed together. The transition of state machine also takes into account related functional exchange and exchange items that are referenced from other elements such as effects or triggers which is not the case in the previous version. Now let's move on to the new features of the collaborative versions of Capilla, Team for Capilla. In Capilla, we have two options called do refresh on representation opening and automatic refresh to make sure that your diagrams are always refreshed and they have the latest modifications. But in the context of a shared model, 
It doesn't always make sense to activate these options because it comes with some performance issues. In this version, depending on whether you are on a local or a shared project, that you have these options activated or not. And these options are completely customizable at project level. It's enough to go to a dedicated preference for a project to check or uncheck those options. We also added a way for users to have a look at the information about the currently connected session. Information such as what are the viewpoints activated on your session, how many diagrams are there on the session, how many of them are loaded or unloaded can become useful in some circumstances. Another interesting feature that's now supported by Team Forkpilla is the ability to use Microsoft Azure Authentication besides existing methods that allow you to authenticate users such as the user manager mode in which you maintain your own base of users or the NDAP mode in which you connect to an NDAP server to authenticate users. Now you have the possibility to do the same thing with Microsoft Azure Authentication Server. Now let's move on to the new features on Capilla add-ons. Just a quick introduction. The requirement add-on allows you to basically import external requirements in RegKeep format into Capilla. Among information that you can import from a requirement coming from RegKeep, you can find some contents that are written in HTML format. In this version of the add-on, we make sure that those texts can be displayed in the Capilla Rich Text Editor so that their styles and colors are preserved, as you can have a look on the slide. Also on the requirement add-on, we support the import of images that are used on the requirement. Different strategies to import images are offered to users. You can choose to put images in a folder with an absolute path, a relative path, or directly embed the image in the text in base64 format. So depending on how you want to manage images in your project, that you choose an appropriate option. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your time and feel free to reach us if you have any question or feedback. Thank you, Mintu. Great. Uh, so yeah, so that were the uh, that were the the major revolutions, the core of of Capella. But as I said, there is not only the core uh, of of Capella. There is there is also uh, some add-ons uh, that have been added by other companies. Uh, and I will uh, progressively, I mean, enhance the scope of uh, of uh, Capella with these uh, these contributions. And uh, yeah, as I said, that we we ask uh, these uh, these tool vendors to uh, present very briefly. Uh, the uh, the what I mean the major uh, objectives of the of the extensions and how they contribute to the uh, to the Capella uh, ecosystem uh, and what were the evolutions uh, in last year and the evolutions uh, that will be uh, th that are foreseen for uh, for this year. So we will start with these uh, requirements. Um, I mean the, the link between the architecture and the textual requirements and uh, with. Uh, Rectify add-on provided by the system, uh, and the Maple MBSC add-on provided the Maple Soft, uh, which is I mean the, the video that they provide is, is focused on the requirements, uh, but just I mean they will be quite um, clearer than more that than me, but um, but um, they they can also use this Maple MBSC tool uh, to uh, to provide some uh, some links with other artifacts than than requirements and to uh, and especially with uh, with Excel files. Um, so yeah, so I introduce uh, Rohil Patil uh, from uh, Katia Redi Software Engineering Specialist uh, to uh, to provide the rectify um, presentation. And then we will uh, we will uh, watch uh, Barhani Mohan uh, from Maple MBSC uh, for uh, this uh, presentation. Here Rectify application is up. Now we are creating a new project in Rectify. In the newly created project, we have to add documents. We are adding now Word document for high level requirement. Now we have to add Capella documents that are Capella file it is present in our Capella project. We are using a sample project of Capella. For capture Capella project with diagram please set capture diagram value.
add the channel between high level documents and Capella document. After press the apply button you can see the Capella is opening. Capella project will be open automatically in Capella. Here we can see the coverage between both document is 0%. We can see Capella elements captured in Rectify. For navigate, rectify to Capella we have to double click on Capella element. The same element is highlighted in Capella Project Explorer view. Navigate from Capella to rectify, select element on Project Explorer view and press navigate to rectify toolbar. For diagram elements, on single click you can see the capture diagram. We already added high level document, in that we have high level requirements are present. Now we are adding high level requirements to Capella document. High level requirements are added in Capella project, we can see in Project Explorer view. Changed in Capella project, it is notified in Rectify. We can see here is no traced in between high level requirement and Capella requirement. From the Capella we can add traceability link in requirements, we are adding trace between high level requirement and Capella requirement. Change in Capella project is notify and rectify. After reload, we can see the traces are captured in Rectify. Due to adding a traceability, coverage percent are increased. The new release for Maple MBAC now supports the use of Capella viewpoint requirements. Let's look at how teams using Capella platform can benefit from the feature and convenience of Maple MBAC when updating the system model. Using MapleMBAC, you can easily manage the requirements in your Capella model. You can use MapleMBAC to input new requirements into the model, maybe back to Capella, or you can access the requirements that are already in your Capella model. Say in your Capella model, you have used the requirements view add-on to import requirements, define new attributes, enumerations, and types for your requirement. MapleMBAC will be able to access the different attributes and enumeration and display it in Excel. You can then make changes to these attributes and save them back to the model. You can also add new relations that connect the requirement to different model elements. You can also add new requirements, define its type and attributes. Or if you want to import new requirements to a project or an existing project with Capella types already defined, you can import the requirement into Maple MBAC, easily set the types and the attributes and save it back to your Capella model. I have Maple MBAC connected to a Capella model with requirements. The contact sheet gives an idea of what each worksheet is about. Example, the requirements import worksheet can import new requirements to the model and the requirement sheet is used to set the type for the requirement and you can also relate the requirement to different model elements, for example the physical component in this view. The relation matrix it shows the requirements that are related to physical components. Finally, the status table which is used to set the review status for the requirement as either pending or reviewed. So for example, if I want to include a new requirement, let's say with an ID R31 and call it LCTSU and the requirement text as the LRS shall provide communication between surface user and earth. You can see the requirement is also synced with the other worksheets. Now to set a type for the requirement I'm going to set it as requirement as defined in Kepala. I'm going to now click on the save button and in Kepala we'll be able to see this new change once I refresh. Now you can see the new requirement and if I open the specification you are able to see the type as requirement. 
for the different types of requirements we have defined in Capella, Maple MBC can easily help you manage your requirements. Thank you, guys. Uh, so still related with uh, with requirements, there are two there are other tool vendors that had work with uh, with requirements as well uh, there is the reuse company that provides the um, requirements authoring tool add-on for for capella uh, and the visioneer uh, add-on for capella that i mean in this case they are mostly related to ensuring the consistency between textual requirements and models so uh, thank you guys I, Ilias, uh, for uh, for this presentation from the reuse company and gerard uh, from uh, visioneer To establish a link between a requirement and a model element, first, use the requirements authoring editor and write a requirement. You see that the link is generated. And once you save and bring the requirement in the diagram, you can see that the link is established. Let's try to introduce a invalid state transition and see how the tool is reacting. You can see that the metric is triggered and the tool is displaying a low quality. With the RAD authoring tools Smart Grid, you can see all the requirements that you created with the plugin. If you create one, then two, and then some other requirements, you can see at a glance the quality results of each of the requirements. And you can also see them in the Project Explorer of Capella. Raft authoring tools enables you to synchronize requirements in Capella and requirements indoors. If you enter the information from your DOORS project, you can then see all the information on both sides and decide what elements you would like to merge, update, or delete on each side. Hello everybody, thank you for watching this presentation. My name is Gerhard Schilling, I am the founder of Visioneer and today I want to show you a really exciting innovation which is about model-based requirement engineering which can reuse any kind of MBSE model elements and import and merge it with classes from our system kit. Those classes will then be reused for the structure of specification or for the automatic creation or synchronization of subsystem MBSE diagrams. As you can see here, the blue model elements are imported from Capella and the red model elements are extended by the requirement engineer. And the same is done with the imported interface data from the model which are imported as classes and which can be viewed and edited as table in a specification. 
the important classes for the functional chains can then be viewed as table and shall be finalized by the requirement engineer in the given format. And the same can be done with any MBSE behavior model that can be merged with classes from our system kit. Similar to this, library classes can be reused. Library classes can exist, for example, for standard ECU operation mode, which can be merged to the imported system states, and the resulting classes can then be viewed and edited as MBSE diagram. The biggest challenge is then, how can behavior requirements be created automatically? The process to define controlled behavior description is very simple. And the first step, the requirement engineer has to define for each functional chain or mode the behavior in a given format. In the second step, this information is reused to define the dominance between the parallel expected behavior combinations in the following table. In step 3, for each function it assigns solutions, the effect on the out signal evaluation and the effect on the process activation shall be defined. In step 4, the behavior of the functional signals can be described with any MBSE diagram. And the final step is then the automatic generation of testable black box requirements and real-time requirements for the scheduler. More detailed information you can find on our homepage. We are happy for your feedback. Bye. Thank you, guys. So related to the, uh, I would say, um, the um, going towards a detailed design and using a uh, and enhancing Capella uh, with um, with simulation uh, uh, capabilities, uh, there is an add-on provided by the PGM company, which is called DES, D E S S, um, and they they enhance Capella uh, with uh, with simulation capabilities. So in this case, it will be Renfei who will uh, who will present us uh, the the features of this add-on. And just to I mean I, we won't talk about this uh, this other feature that were were was presented last year. But my colleague Pierre uh, provided a webinar last year on uh, on the link between between Capella and uh, simulation platforms and in particular uh, Simulink uh, platforms. Uh, so it's a very interesting webinar. I won't present it uh, this time because it means we, we did a webinar last year, but I highly recommend to, uh, to watch this webinar if you are interested. DSS is an extension made by PGM for Capella and SMW for dynamic execution and system simulation. It is mainly aimed to verify the architectural model before you go to any further stage. It can make state machine and functional data flow executable and automatically record the execution process as scenarios. We have made some extension to the state machine and also the functional data flow in order to make them executable. And you can embed your MATLAB or Python code inside the functions to make the system simulation and then just execute your model and get the outcomes. The main evolution of DSS made in 2021 is the integration with Python, the ability to export state charts XML, support for change event, and the compatibility for Capella 5.x. First, let's take a look at the integration with Python. We can generate the Python code structure automatically for all the functions. And in this example, we will modify the property value in the Python code. And then we can reference it in state machine to make some choices. The second one, change event. In this version of DES, we will use the exchange item to trigger the change event. So in this example, 
we will use the exchange item engine temp. When the engine temp goes greater than 500, it will trigger the transition from the up state to the down state. You can see we will modify the exchange item in some functions and then we will use it as a change event to trigger the transition. The, thir the third one, SCXML exportation. So we can use the right click menu of the state machine to do the exportation. Please contact us by the email marketing at pgmse.com. Thank you, Renfei. Uh, so, um, architecture, I mean, in, in Capella, we have uh, many uh, possibilities for uh, adding different concerns uh, in, um, I mean, considering different concerns uh, when uh, pro uh, defining the, the architecture, the system architectures. Uh, there are some, uh, the capability of extensions of Capella and providing specific viewpoints uh, which are extension points and in order to add, uh, I mean, other uh, concerns, uh, properties. At, there's also the property value management tool uh, and the diagram styler uh, tools that are provided uh, in, uh, in for, for Capella that allow you to define your own uh, properties and user-defined properties and you can refine the, uh, the definition of the architecture with uh, different concerns. And one of the major concerns uh, that people use is the safety uh, concern because I mean it's critical <laughs> for uh, for some kind of systems and some microfluid systems that that implement model-based systems engineering in avionics in defense etc. So there's the company All for Tech that uh, provide this add-on which is kind of a bridge between their tool which is safety architecture and Capella and it allows uh, a workflow. Uh, in order to define some safety concerns in Capella and then import the Capella model and some aspects of the Capella model, and specifically uh, functions, uh, changes, and components, uh, and go into their tool and run a, a specific and, and detailed uh, safety analysis and in, then inject the results uh, into Capella. So in this case, it will be Jean and Jonathan who will uh, present us uh, um, the, um, the safety architecture add-on for Capella.
Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, so you see that the scope of the uh, of the Cabela has been I mean, quite enhanced uh, regarding the V cycle, but there are other enhancements that are related to the technical management concerns. Uh, there is uh, as there is team for Capella, there is also the possibility to run Capella. Uh, I mean. Uh, in, in an external infrastructure, and OBO will be presenting the C4C uh, add-on. Uh, and obviously, there is a very important concern, which is the, the I mean, extraction of the information in Capella uh, into uh, documents, because, I mean, we still need to, to work with documents and to provide documents to our customers. So there is the M2Doc solution uh, as well. And uh, finally, there will be Artal that will be presenting the Yusu add-on, which is a library management uh, add-on, which uh, kind of uh, uh, enhances the capabilities of Capella in terms of collaborative work and uh, configuration management. So it will be Frederic and Aufi uh, from Obio who will be presenting us uh, M2Doc and um, uh, C4C uh, solution. Cloud for Capella is a solution for anyone who wants to use Capella without having to worry about installation and IT infrastructure concerns. It relies on a cloud environment managed by Obio, where Capella is already deployed, with several pre-installed add-ons and the possibility to work in a collaborative mode with a Team for Capella server. The environment is accessible remotely through a secured connection. When you click on the Cloud for Capella shortcut, you must enter your credentials and then you may access a remote desktop. On this desktop, you can find a shortcut to launch a Capella client that has been extended with a selection of add-ons pre-installed by Obio. Once the Capella client is open, you can use it as if you would on your own desktop. You can browse the model, open diagrams, modify elements, create a new architecture, etc. With Cloud for Capella, you can quickly start using Capella and work collaboratively and securely with your team and partners. Everyone is guaranteed to use the same environment and the same version. And the data, meaning your workspace and your models, is saved thanks to automatic and constant backups. M2Doc is an open source add-on that allows you to generate customized Word documents from your Capella models. It works with WYSIWYG templates that you can edit directly from Word. These templates include queries to retrieve data from the model. Since version 3.2, M2Doc provides an interpretive view to facilitate writing queries in AQL. In this view, you can enter an AQL expression. Select a model element on which you can execute the query and immediately see the result. When you enter the AQL query, a content assistant shows the functions that you can use depending on your context and displays their documentation. The query is constantly evaluated to detect errors and guide you to fix the problems. With this new feature, you can write document generators more quickly with a better quality. Thank you guys. And then Jonathan uh, will uh, present us uh, the, uh, the Jusu uh, solution um, from, uh, from our time. Yuzu is a Capella extension dedicated to the management of assets. Designed and developed by Artal Technologies, it allows you to store and to keep tracks of all your Capella projects, libraries and dependencies. Please let me introduce a simple use case in order to highlight some of the benefits. Imagine that you are opening an existing Capella project. 
suddenly get an error message telling you that some libraries are missing. But which libraries? Where are they stored? Which version of the libraries are required? By managing all your projects and libraries using Yuzu, you will be able to automatically download dependencies from your self-hosted repository. No more trouble regarding dependencies resolution. How it works? You first have to convert your projects into assets, as it is defined in the RAS OMG standard, by using user specific menus and actions. You will then be able to specify several meta informations and also to inject your own ones. The next step will consist in uploading it on the dedicated repository. The Yuzu server infrastructure embeds indexing mechanisms that provide powerful search engine. The user can define its own search queries based on meta information such as tags, machine dates, model content, and so on. It also allows the management of roles and permissions. Built on top of proven big data technologies, the user capital extensions support from now on all capital versions from 1.2 to Capella 5. Feel free to visit our website or to contact us for additional information. Thank you, Jonathan. So uh, it, it was just a, I mean, a major uh, some of the major um, extensions uh, of Capella, they are not all there, uh, but uh, you can see that with these extensions and add-ons, the scope of Capella is, is enhanced, uh, and, and this is great. And, and we really hope that uh, other uh, tool vendors or, or software developers uh, will will uh, will I mean will embrace the movement and will um, I will get use of the open source capabilities of uh, of Capella, and um, they will be able to uh, to build bridges with their own tools or to extend uh, Capella features with the viewpoints. Uh, in order to, to enhance the scope of, uh, of um, usage uh, of Capella. Uh, but uh, today, uh, Capella, can, this is why I talk about kind, of kind of a platform, we provide the core uh, and there are other uh, evolutions uh, that are provided uh, following the interest of the, uh, of the, of the users. Uh, this is only a, an extract because, I mean, uh, we, we are aware of a lot of... Uh, uh, of evolution that are made in in some companies and uh, they are not necessarily public uh, and I mean of course they, they they're right uh, but we can, we strongly encourage the the people that uh, that get use of this uh, this capella and this capella is open source not necessarily to to make them open source but uh, to uh, I mean if they want it it will be great uh, but to make them available to uh, to other users and it will be great it will be uh, let other users uh, um, progress in their own uh, implementation of model based systems engineering capabilities in their uh, in their own companies so having said that, uh, I would like to thank very much uh, you for for attending this webinar. Uh, I provide all the, I mean, for those that don't know, all the resources and, and useful um, links uh, to know more about uh, about Capella. There is this, uh, I mean, Capella website, LinkedIn, <laughs> Twitter, for the forum, the YouTube channel, um, the the, exam the sample models. And uh, yeah, thank, thanks again. And uh, I'm open uh, for, um, for questions uh, in the remaining time. Thank you very much. Uh, is there a roadmap for getting a better uh, uh, MMI? Uh, well, palace is rich, but there's too many items or contextual menus are too large. Could we imagine to substitute the Eclipse interface by a smart smartphone-like tactile technology? Yeah, well, regarding um, regarding the richness of the interface of Capella, uh, maybe you are not aware of the uh, some of um, of the features. And there is a feature uh, that is called uh, capabilities. It's very, I mean, the name is not very good because it can be mis uh, misunderstood. I mean, related to the to the concept of capabilities in Arcadia. But there are these uh, Eclipse or Capella capabilities, and uh, selecting or not these capabilities, like related to the functional analysis and to the interface management, you can um, you can uh, I can say I would say uh, clean up uh, a lot 
uh, the, the palette in, in some diagrams, and especially in those diagrams in which the palette is, is quite rich, like the architecture diagrams at the physical architecture perspective. So I I, rec I suggest to uh, to look up uh, look at this um, this uh, feature in in Capella in order to have a, a I mean a more uh, clearer uh, user interface. Okay, thanks. And um, do you have some information on some of the upcoming features in Capella Six? Um, well, the, the Capella Six is uh, is been uh, scope is being defined right now. Uh, in our organization, we work on on short uh, cycles, uh, and we are guided by the uh, by the needs of our uh, our business units. So it's uh, there are I mean there are a lot of needs that have been identified, but they are have not been uh, prioritized or, or or selected. So it would be done uh, during this year. So it, that's why it was not uh, presented uh, today. Okay, thanks, Juan. Um, yeah, probably the next question is for me. Uh, Will Cloud for Capella is going to replace Team for Capella? And uh, actually, it's it just uh, a kind of different deployment uh, uh, for, well, we, we will continue to, to, to deliver Team for Capella, and uh, some companies are uh, very strict security policy and absolutely want to keep their data internally. And those kind of company prefer to have their own physical server and, and manage all the IT by themselves. And so in this case, uh, Team for Capella continue to be uh, the, the most interesting solution. Uh, for also kind of company, uh, well, they, they are pretty bored with uh, uh, having to uh, by a, a physical server or, or to install anything. And so for such kind of companies, they just want to subscribe to a ready-to-use environment. And in this case, they, 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 they will be interested by Cloud for Capella. And actually, uh, it, it wasn't mentioned uh, in, the, in today's presentation, but Cloud for Capella can uh, propose, uh, let's say, just a basic Capella environment. Uh, basic meaning uh, Capella plus a lot of uh, uh, common add-ons, uh, pre-integrated. Uh, it can also provide a, a collaborative environment, including Team for Capella. And it can also uh, provide a, a publication for Capella, <coughs> which haven't been mentioned uh, until, until, uh, until now. And so this is just a kind of subscription to a ready to use our own, but absolutely not something which will replace uh, Team for Capital. Uh, next, next question. Um, well, I, I will ask you one, but I'm not sure if you, you, you will be able to, to answer or if it's your responsibility at least. Uh, compared to MATLAB and Simulink, what does uh, MAPL Embassy bring? Uh, yeah, no, indeed. I, I... <laughs> Uh, if, if there is somebody from uh, from Maple uh, connected, I I, I I would prefer them to uh, to answer. I don't have the the elements. No, I mean, no. as I, as I, I mean, I think the, the important uh, thing that I will I will highlight is that uh, as as I said, uh, Capella is open source and it's uh, uh, I would say uh, free uh, evolution. <laughs> Uh, of the there's a, the evolution of the of the ecosystem is, is 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 free so I mean there may be solutions that are are related I mean similar to other ones and and that's absolutely not an issue because they are they may be better handled than uh, better I mean better address some some issues of the of the users so uh, there are there are many solutions regarding some of the uh, um, some of the concerns that our users have, and, and that's uh, perfectly okay. This is the spirit of the uh, the open source community. Yes, thanks. Thanks for that one. Um, are there any plans to provide an open source bridge from Capella to Open Modelica? Well, in in our company is, um, I mean, we we regarding simulation, I would say, uh, multi physics. We uh, we have until now privileged. Uh, the uh, the bridge with uh, with Simulink, which is a 
uh, simulation engine and software that uh, that we use in our company. That's why we we, we did a webinar on, on it. Um, I, I'm not aware of uh, people uh, developing this uh, this kind of uh, bridges. It will be quite interesting, and if there is somebody interested on it, it may be um, interesting to uh, to discuss uh, about it. Yep. And um, well, I have to mention that we we have some company interested in this topic, really, but nothing public and nothing ready to use on this. Um, and probably the last question, except if uh, if uh, you you had a, a few. Uh, and this one's for me, probably. Uh, are, are there also plans to provide an open source OSLC capability for Capella to connect to other tools? And well, I, I briefly mentioned publication for, for Capella. Um, actually, uh, by default, publication for Capella provide a, a connection to uh, uh, Doors and Polarion. Um, uh, but this is based on uh, the OSLT protocol, and so it it's quite easy to 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 add new tools also compatible with uh, with OSLT. Uh, however, this one is a, is a commercial tool provided by OBO, and I'm not aware of any let's say uh, uh, open source project on this uh, on this topic. Thanks for having attended this webinar. Uh, it was a pleasure to to share this moment with you. Have a good day and, and goodbye. Thank you, Samuel. Bye. Bye, all.